which one of the fundamental tenets of uh, the Indian constitution is federalism. And in a country with federalism is one of the fundamental features of our constitution, you want to impose a unitary structure which is required for destroying the secular democratic republic and replacing it with a Hindutva, a fascistic Hindutva state. Now, this is the battle that we are today engaged in. And then, not only is it the judiciary, the uh, election commission, but every single authority under the Indian constitution. And the worst, of course, is the CBI and the Enforcement Department, ED, which are acting actually as the political agents of the government. And then, of course, the governors that, are, that have been appointed and the role that they are playing, not only in Kerala, with the fight between the LDF government and the governor of Kerala, where you've seen that happen in Tamil Nadu, you're seeing that happen in Telangana, you see it happen earlier in Bengal, and where the assemblies had to pass laws to remove the governor as the chancellor of the universities in the states. So the governors are also acting as the extension of the political authority of the <coughs> current government in Delhi. So this is the, the state of destruction of the secular democratic republic that was erected by the mighty freedom struggle that, that took place in our country, which gave us this freedom. This constitution is the product of that struggle. It's an epic people's struggle through which we won our independence and we created this secular democratic republic. That is that is we are on the verge of that being transformed into a fascistic Hindutva Rashtra. If that happens, then the entire premise of what India stands today as its political structure and according to this constitution, that is destroyed. Now, the, this is happening along with the development of this corporate communal nexus, as I would call it. The corporate communal nexus has become so strong today in our country that even during the COVID period, all of you, your report surely would have discussed all these issues. And you have seen how the rich are becoming richer, poor are becoming poorer, and how the rich are destroying democracy. The role of money power in elections, where parties like you and me, I mean, it will find it increasingly difficult. I'm coming from Himachal now in the election campaign. Every candidate has to put out advertisements in newspapers and on television channels about the status of the criminal, uh, criminal record. And that money has to be paid, in our cases, by the party, but uh, by the individuals, but it's also a huge amount that slowly eases out smaller parties from the democratic process itself. Now, that's, these are the sort of dangers that we are having. This corporate communal nexus backing the transformation of India from a secular democratic republic into a fascistic Hindutva Rashtra. That is the challenge that is there before us. That challenge can only be met with strengthening the people's movements and struggles, directly confronting this challenge and on the basic issues confronting the livelihood of the people. You all know the situation, unemployment, the growing hunger, the rising prices, the every, and all the burdens that are being put on the people of our country. Big struggles uh, have taken place, continue to take place. The trade unions against privatization, all of us against the loot of our economy, our country, our resources. All these struggles are going on. But yet, but yet the growth of the Hindutva hold over people's consciousness is also rising. What explains this? You will have millions of people will come and join our struggles behind the red flag. But when the time of voting comes, where do they go? And why do they go? Why do they go? And that is what the final point I'd like to make, respecting uh, Comrade Manoj's uh, time constraint. The final point, that is what I think the important role that the left parties have to play is that why is this mismatch happening? Why do people rally behind our parties in big mass movements, get arrested, go to jail, face latte charges, big historic farmer struggle for one year, and yet electoral victory is there for the BJP? 
why is the, what is this consciousness that is happening which we need we will have to left parties will have to understand and and combat and the, what is that happening is that that very very rapidly there is a very forthright attack by this ideology of hindutva rashtra against reason and rationality what is removed from normal discourse is rationality rationality if it's replaced by irrationality then it leads people to become victims of blind faith and that is a systematic campaign where the consciousness of every human being is bombarded with irrational and unreason and that you see all on your tv serials in your social media in the pressure on the bollywood now to produce films which cater to the hindutva ideology and straight forward campaigns against reason and rationality and changing your education policy to suit that objective where people will be reduced to accepting blind faith and once faith is accepted i heard the up chief minister in himachal two days ago while we were campaigning there saying that in india i mean in hindi he was saying hamare bharat ke log bhooke mar sakte hain lekin apna aastha ko kabhi nahi chhodenge bhooke ho sakte hain berozgar ho sakte hain lekin aastha hamari aastha ki raksha karenge so that said you be unemployed you be hungry but when it comes to vote is at hindutva i mean that has to be protected now that battle against irrationality in unreason that has to be that has to be fought and the counter hegemony of people's consciousness has to be built in order to succeed in our battle to defeat these hindutva fascistic forces otherwise we cannot preserve the secular democratic republic of india and without preserving the secular democratic character of india and its indian constitution we cannot advance in our objective of moving towards socialism and giving the economic freedom to every single individual in our country and that is a challenge comrades and to meet the challenge we the left will have to unite not only in strengthening struggles on economic issues but in strengthening struggles in meeting this ideological battle and combating hindutva requires to be battled ideologically that is why we in our party have said that the imperative today is to isolate and defeat the bjp defeating the bjp will come through electoral alliances all of us coming together etc but isolating the bjp and its consciousness can come only through determined counter campaigns and what gramshi is called to build the counter hegemony the counter hegemony has to be built which will influence people's consciousness and both of these have to combine and go together and that is why today when finally when modi is calling of about his amrit kal is a amrit kal those of us who are familiar with our puranic traditions we know amrit was born in the samudra manthan in the churning of the oceans and in the samudra manthan amrit was also born poison was also born and what happens as soon as both these emerge from this churning of the oceans this is the our puranic stories i mean you know what they tell us as soon as these two kalashas emerge amrit and uh, poison and zahir so to speak the rakshasas get hold of the amrit first and they run away and after a great battle a I mean, great effort the devatas get back the amrit to themselves that's a different story how they do it but today we are standing at a time when the rakshasas have run away with the amrit that amrit is now in the hands of those rakshasas that has to be brought back for the welfare of the people to save india today so that we can change india for the better tomorrow so that is what we will all have to do so my best wishes to your deliberations 
I'm sure you will strengthen the left in achieving this objective. Let us all together save India today in order to change it for a better India tomorrow for the Indian people and for the country with this confidence that we'll all be working together to achieve this objective at the national level. I convey my revolutionary greetings once again to all of you. Inkalab Jindabha. Thank you very much.